video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. <laughs> Hello, you have reached Russ Grace with RWGResearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Hey, what's up, everybody? So, before this video starts, I decided to make this video. I've tried so many times to do this circuit board stuff with the etching method, scratch and eth, 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 etch, scratch and etch method. So I'm gonna let this play out, watch this video, you'll see what I've done. I've recorded like hours of footage and I just chopped it all together to make something worth watching. But after this video, sometime in the near future, we're gonna try some a third method of making circuit boards. Lasers. So stick around, enjoy. And wait for the laser video in the next couple of months. Hi, Lily. There's a thing. Are you ready to make a printed circuit board? No. What? <laughs> are you Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Lily, this is it. Are you ready to make a circuit board? No, just that's so. Hey, are you ready to make a circuit board? I don't know. Do you have any idea what you're saying? A uh, minion. Do you see your Oh, your minion. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Thanks. Okay, you ready to play? Yeah. Okay, let's play. We're going to make some circuit boards today, boys and girls. You ready to get started? You can go to I have no idea what you just said, but okay. I do to touch. Okay, that's enough. It's just on the lawn. Okay. Why? Because I have it turned around, you cannot see it. I don't have to touch it. I don't know, you could talk to yourself all day. I don't know how to get you up. Anyway. Okay. Let's get started. Welcome back to the PCB 3D printing making. Are you ready? Okay, here's what we're going to do. I spent a lot of time trying to get this to work with no success. So I made this. What is this you ask? No. What? What is this? This is this. Okay, this is a jig that holds my circuit board in the right spot. Okay. It's almost flush with it, but it doesn't really matter. It just needs to be in place. And then on this board, I've marked four holes exactly 90 millimeters away from the center of this board, right in the middle. So now when I do this, I can flip the board over. I can put it back in the same spot, and we should have a perfect matched double-sided circuit board. So if I did not have this a double-sided circuit board, I would have been done with this a long time ago. But, I needed it to be double sided because I have stuff coming out of the top and stuff coming out of the bottom. So, let's see if this works. First things first, we need to coat the circuit board with a coating. You have to excuse the ch chitty chatty in the background. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this circuit board down with some denatured alcohol, acetone. Put that back. Anything else is fine, but that's what I happen to have. So, we're going to do it. Yeah, go put that back. Here, go put this back. Thanks. Big helpers not really helping me. Alright, the idea here is to attempt to get rid of some of the fingerprints. So I'm going to try to just hold on to the edge of the board. This isn't a hugely necessary step, I don't think, but we're going to do it because we can. Alright, so we pretty well got rid of the, uh, oh I need safety glasses, at least doesn't need safety glasses. We pretty well got all of those done. You cool? Am I cool now? You're a giant distraction, but awfully cute. Here, come sit over here so we can see you. Come sit over here. Wow. Yes, wow. Alright, here's the circuit board. We are going to coat it with this Sharpie marker. Now, using the tip of the Sharpie, Sharpie marker would take a really long time. So what I've done is I've removed the back of the Sharpie and I'm using the felt on the back. I cut off the plastic so I can get right to the felt. Now, you ready for this Lily? Yeah. Now we can just coat this bad boy. Oh, I need to fix the felt. I need to get it more out. Look at that. What do you think of that Lily? Because what happens is this stuff 
likes to dry. And then you end up wiping it back off. <coughs> Lily, you're in my light. Come sit on the other side of me. Come sit over here. No. Why not? Not. Come on, just help me out. There you go. So the idea is, is I didn't want to go buy one of those big giant fat sharpie markers. So instead, this works really well. Now, I already tested this. One coat seems to be enough. Two, co two coats is always better. You okay, Lily? The thing I've noticed about two coats is if you do this after you let it dry, you end up just wiping it back off. So we're going to do both sides. You can see how double coating it doesn't really work that great. What? The alternative to using this technique is you can purchase some what they call uh, metal dye or marking dye and the marking dye you can actually brush on really thick and it seems to be probably a better solution but at this point in the game I'd have to buy that wait for it to come in and I don't have the patience or the time asked me two weeks ago when I started this project and I probably would have said yeah sure that sounds easy but I want to do it tomorrow and that's what happened tomorrow turned in almost three weeks two and a half weeks later every other night or every night messing around with this thing and I finally uh, ended up making this jig and getting to this point and so far this marker has done me good so we'll just stick with the marker technique for now all right a note to get uh, the ink to come to the end is just uh, you know let centrifugal force pull it to the end okay so second go round of doing this as you guys know I put the cutter holder on here and instead of making a new holder I just made these bushings this is actually rigid dot ink PLA plus so is that mount uh, so I've got two things I've got an ink pen and what I did is I took the spring out of the back and I put it on the front so now the tip of the ink pen actually springs back. Now the other thing I have is I have one of these punches. So this is what you put on your plastic, metal, whatever you want, and you click it like that, right? And so what happens is, is it leaves an indent. This is spring-loaded. What I did was I took the spring out of the front, re put, the, put a bigger, smaller tension spring in the back, and then now when I push it, it clicks, but it stays up. I have to actually grab it and pull it back to get it back out. Then it's on a spring. But when it clicks, it stays up. That's going to help me get everything started because of the way I've got it. So I just made a bushing, and I'm just going to insert that into the holder. First things first, we're going to lower the Z-Pro, put the other one up, and level the bed. So this is going to level the bed, the normal bed leveling sequence. So we'll let it run. All right. So it thinks it is level, and now we're going to go ahead and adjust the height manually. But before we do that, I actually need to get this thing set. So I wanted some sort of uh, thingamabobs to hold this in place, such as uh, suction cups that I could like put screw holds on, which they're probably somewhere. That way I can move this around and take it off and do whatever. But I'm actually going to just um, get this thing centered. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Z probe and put it up, take our tool and put it down, and I'm going to try to get the tip of this tool to be exactly in these holes. I really only need to align it to these two here and then I know everything's square perpendicular and centered. So I'll bring it, I'll bring this down to zero, zero, zero down to the bed, bring it over to 80, bring it over to 80, 
get that configured and then actually um, tape this down is probably what I'll do. All right, I think I said 80 millimeter, I don't remember, but it's actually 90 millimeter to each one of those holes. So that hole, which is pretty hard to see, but that hole is as lined up as it's going to be. And then if I move it uh, across, then that hole is lined up as best it's going to be. It does look slightly off, and I don't know if that's because my printer's not perfectly calibrated yet, or what, but it's actually offset just a tiny bit. So now we've got everything squared up. So we're going to home it, we're going to bring it down, and we're going to set the Z height for a PCB. Alright, so by manually running it down and setting it to where I want, I can look at the Z height here. I can calculate what I want it to offset using the M665 H4. The H is the height setting, then you put the number you want. So now it is calibrated to the right height. So if I run this guy down manually, uh, all the way down, hopefully it doesn't crash. It should be just right. So I've got just a little pressure on there. So we're touching at about there. So we've got three extra millimeters. One, two, three. Then my print, because I have it set at one millimeter height, that's just how I did it. We go back up one, and we should be good. So we go up one because the printer thinks it's putting down one millimeter layer height. I just did that for the fun of it. So now, if I if I click this, now it's up off there, and then if I pull it all the way down, then it's out. So that's what I'm going to be doing to uh, to actually pause and, and run this thing. etched with a sharp, sharp point. Now it's time to dump it in the solution. Alright, so here it is. The only issue I see is you can kind of see how the copper lines fade and come back and fade and come out. That's due to the ink being pushed into the groove. You can kind of see that on here. I'm not sure if that's going to make a huge difference or if the ink is now thin there or if it's loose. Honestly, I don't know. I sharpened my scraper hoping that would take care of the problem, but there's probably ink on that scraper. But Anyway, so here's what I got set up. I've got my, my uh, sulfuric acid, I think it is. I can't remember anyway. It's the stuff from, uh, uh, where is this from? old stuff. This is from uh, Radio Shack. Anyway, I've got some forks sitting on the bottom so that I can fill this up with hot water and I can get this stuff pretty hot because it works a lot better when it's warm. So we're going to dip it in here and we're going to give it about 20 minutes. We're going to take it off and we're going to rinse it. So <laughs> let's hope it works. Need to get something and poke it in there. get under. In you go. Alright, starting the timer. 20 minutes. Okay, our 20 minutes, 20 minutes is about up. I, I actually um, ended up taking it out at 15, or uh, yeah, 15, and washed it and see what it looked like. It needed some more, so Let's go ahead and take it out now and try that again. So it's starting to eat away some of the marker. And also, I had, um, 
I also had already etched and resanded or scraped and resanded this board. So that's, those go in opposite directions as these traces, so that might cause a serious problem. Traces might be eaten into. All right, let's go rinse this off. All right, so it, it is illegal to wash, or not to wash maybe, but to dump this stuff down the drain or the toilet. So I don't know anything about washing, but you're not supposed to just dump it. You can almost wash. You can almost wipe the ink off as you can see there, but I'm going to take something else and clean it. So this particular board already had, um, you can see there's lines going in both directions here. So I sanded it and then I used the same board because I didn't want to just throw it away. So what happened here is you've got two things on top of each other and I think some of the other lines are deep enough that the ink didn't get in good enough and it actually is going to be causing a cross problem. So I'll shine the light there and show you what I mean. So here's the board. You can't see much right now, but if I go back here with the light, look at that. So, can't see really much of anything, but boom. Those traces are cut. And here you can see those lines I was talking about. Those lines are going the other direction. They look like they've cut completely into the trace, which means that trace is junk. Which means this board is junk. So, I used old etchant solution. Um, if I used new, maybe it would etch the copper faster and not quite as much of the... Uh, actually, you can see how it tried to eat into the other trace that I did. So, no worries. I've got another board, but I'm going to have to save that for another day. But at the moment, let's go clean this off. Alright, so maybe you can't tell, but this isn't the first time I was doing this. So I, I would recommend using acetone, but all I have is denatured alcohol. So I'm going to use denatured alcohol. It doesn't work as well, but it works. I'm just going to put a little in here. I'm going to dip this board in there. Give it a little stir. This will get it all loosened up. And if you spray a little, you can see, you can wash it off. So what we're actually going to do, get this nice and stirred up. Try not to get my fingers completely blue today. So it's better if you can... Denatured alcohol doesn't evaporate as fast. But... Uh, Kind of wash it off. It seems to work better this way. Like I said, acetone works a lot better, but you use what you got. And we can wipe anything off we got. There's our finished board. Now you can see these nasty lines. Not the other lines, but the brush marks. That's actually the marker. The marker brush marks. You can see this side of the board looked like it etched a lot deeper than this side. This looked like it had really, 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 really fine lines. I mean, you almost can't see the lines. See how fine they are? And on this side, those exact same lines are a lot thicker, which means it etched a lot further. So let's just, uh, let's look really quickly with the light again. So there's this side. You can see those other cross hatch marks, which are cutting into my board, especially through there. I'm pretty sure those traces are completely cut. They can be soldered, but maybe I can salvage this board if I can solder those. If it's just a few... It's not a big deal. Now this side didn't have... Actually, this side did have those scratches. Uh, this side must have just been deeper or something. Yeah, that's what it was. This side was a lot deeper. Anyway, 
freaking sweet. We know it works. This is the second time I've actually done this with actually etching one. But all right, now we could lightly sand this. Let's try that real quick and see if we can clean this up. But I'm afraid if you sand it, you're gonna put copper in these go in these holes. So actually, I think I'm not gonna do that. That's that's a really small hole. That's some crazy stuff right there. All right, guys, here we are. This is the final, not the final board. This is the board we just did. I want to show you what it looks like under this. So this is very important because this tells the story. First of all, you can see right there that other etching. See how it's etched on top of it and it cut the traces right there? Especially like right there, look at that, just right through all those traces. However, we can also see how accurate this thing is. There you can see one of the traces actually isn't cut all the way through, which is probably where some of the marker was was fudged into the crack. So this one is like etched not too much, but um, probably about just right. So let me show you. Now let me actually show you. Okay, actually those are the big holes. Here's the small holes. So look at that. Let me get this lined up. You can see, and you can see exactly how. Uh, sorry about the double lines there. It's just the light reflecting, but you can see how. What is that? That's millimeters right there. So you can see how. How tight the tolerances are. It's pretty impressive. I mean, look at how small those holes are. Here's my finger. Now the other side of the board is what I kind of wanted to show you. This one, although it looks really good at, you know, when you just look at it, see that? When you get the microscope out and you start looking closer, let's see if we can get it to focus. When you start looking closer, look at that. See that? It's like a patch of uh, something. I don't know what that's all about, but it's actually not etched all the way through. There's another trace going the other way. Right there, look at that. That spot right there. See how it's not etched all the way through? That's a short circuit. That's no good. And you can't really see that with the naked eye, even with this. Oh, actually almost caught it right there see it you can kinda see those patches and that's how that I sanded this so maybe there's sand patches in there or maybe those those are actually just marker marker scrapes anyway just to kinda show you that looking through it like this doesn't really help if you can't see uh, can't see the other side let's try something I got an idea there we go, and now we're looking like a dark microscope, where you're looking underneath it. It's almost too bright. There you go. Pull the contrast back. Anyway, you get the idea. So, I've got some things to think about. Maybe using a laser is a better method. More later. Peace out. Don't forget to leave a comment. Bye. Oh, that's bright. Yeah.